Sometimes in real life projects, the source of your data might contain technical or unfriendly names. And when you are creating visualizations for the users or your colleagues, you have to make sure that you are using friendly names that are easy to understand and to read. And that's why after you connect your data to Tableau data sources, Tableau will start cleaning up and renaming the fields and the tables to more friendly format. And the format is following specific naming convention that is decided from the Tableau team, which is really great. So let's understand first, what is naming convention? Naming conventions are a set of rules and guidelines that could be used in order to give names for things like tables, fields, functions, and variables in consistent and understandable way. Let's say, for example, we have the two words hello world. In order to create a naming convention, we have to decide in two things. First, the word itself, how we're gonna write it. Here we have three ways. We can use the lowercase, or we can decide to go with the uppercase, or we could use the capital letters. And the second thing to decide is the separator between words. So between hello and word, we have here white space. Here we have different options. You could use dots, underscore, dash, white space, or even nothing. So now, for example, let's say we're going to go with the lowercase and the separator underscore. Then we're going to have the following name, hello underscore world. So with that, we have a naming convention that we're going to follow through all the projects and it's really easy to follow. And at the same time, it's very important to decide on the naming convention for your data model, especially at the start of your project. And if you don't do that, I promise you the look and feeling of your visualizations and dashboard gonna look really bad and the whole project gonna look unprofessional and inconsistent. And one more thing, project team decides on different naming conventions, so there is no really right and wrong here. Alright everyone, so now I'm gonna walk you through the most common naming conventions used in programming languages. The first naming convention is the snake case. Case gonna use the lowercase in all the words and gonna separate them using the underscore. So the name at the end gonna look like snake. All right, so our example gonna be the customer name and we're gonna work with this table to fill all the different naming conventions, an example of the output, the rules for the letter case and the separators, and in which applications and programming languages we can find this rule. Where are we gonna start with the snake case? The letter case gonna be here lowercase and the separator is going to be the underscore. So if we follow those rules with the example, we're going to have a lowercase customer underscore name. And we can find those formats in Python, PHP, and Ruby. So the snake format is really easy and popular, and you can find it like almost everywhere. And now we're going to talk about the next naming convention. We have the camel case. And here we have another naming convention that looks like an animal. So in the camel case, only the first word gonna be lowercase, but then all the following words gonna be capitalized. And between the words, there is nothing, no separators, no dots, underscores, dashes, or anything. So at the end, we're gonna have the shape of camel. All right, so that means we have the second naming convention. We have the camel case. The rule for the letter case gonna be the following. The first word gonna be lower and the rest of the words it's gonna be capitalized. For the second rule, we have the separation. There is no separation. There is nothing between the words. So here we're gonna write no separation. So now if we apply those two rules in our example, the customer name, we're gonna have the following output. So the first one gonna be everything lowercase. Customer. There is no separation. That means we're gonna start immediately with the second word, but the second word gonna be capitalized. So it's gonna be name like this. And we can see the camel case is widely used in programming languages like Java, JavaScript, and TypeScript. 
Okay, so that means we have the third naming convention. We have the Pascal case. It's very similar to the Camel case. So the rule says all the words gonna be capitalized. So here we have capitalized and the separations. There is no separation like the Camel case. So there is nothing. So if you follow those two rules on the customer name, we're gonna have the following output. So the first word gonna be customer capitalized, no separation, then a capitalized name. And we can find this naming convention, the Pascal case, is used in programming languages like Java and C Sharp. I like this naming convention. I used it in many projects. All right, the next naming convention gonna be the kebab case. And I think by now the one who named those naming conventions should be an Arabic dude. As you can see, we have all the words are lower cased in the skewer and separated with dashes. So the name gonna look like a delicious hot kebab skewer. So now the fourth one, we have the kebab case. And the rule gonna say, okay, the letter case gonna be lower cased like the snake case and the separation gonna be here the dash so if we follow those two rules on the customer name in our example we're gonna have the following output it's really easy gonna be customer or lower then a dash then name and if you are a web developer or designer, I think you know about this naming convention because it is widely used in HTML and CSS. I think it's like the snake case. It's really easy to follow. And now we have another naming convention. This one is very important and we call it a title case. It has nothing to do with animals or foods, sadly. So we have here title case. The rule gonna say, okay, the word's gonna be capitalized and we're gonna separate the words with a white space. So here we're gonna have space. So now if you follow those two rules in our example, we're gonna have capitalized customer, then space, then capitalized name like this. So why it's important? Because this one is the naming convention that Tableau team did decide to go with. So you can see this naming convention in Tableau. So Tableau currently is enforcing this naming convention in all your data. So once you connect your data to Tableau, Tableau gonna clean up and rename everything following this rule. Well, if you look at it, it's really friendly and easy to read, but sometimes in projects we are forced or we are following some requirements to follow a specific naming convention which doesn't match with the title case. Then the situation is really bad. You have to go and rename everything again. And of course, you don't have to follow one of those naming conventions. You can make your own rules and guidelines. So for example, let's say this is my naming convention and the letter case, let's say it's capitalized and I would like to separate the words with the underscore. So I'm just mixing stuff around. So if I apply those rules to the customer names, we're going to have something like this. So capitalized customer underscore capitalized name and with that we have defined our naming convention all right so now let's check the naming conventions in our data sets and as well in tableau so now if you go through the data sets that i've prepared for this course the small and the big one you can see that i'm always following the same naming convention the letters gonna be capitalized and gonna be separated with an underscore. So for example, on the orders, we have the products underscore ID, or if you go to the customers, you can see the first underscore name and so on. So I'm always following the same naming convention. All right, so now let's check how Tableau did rename our fields and tables from the data sets. You can check those informations either from the worksheet or in the data source page, but in the data source page, you can find more informations. So now we are at the data source page. Let's go to the metadata grid. And here it's really interesting we're gonna find two field names we have here the field name and the remote field name so what are the differences between them well the information in the remote field names comes from the original data sets and as you saw the original data set is following the naming convention of having underscore between two words and we have all the words capitalized so we have for example the order underscore id customer underscore id and so on so all informations we find under the remote field names 
comes from the original data set from the original source system. But now the field name on the left side over here, those informations comes from Tableau after renaming and cleaning up our fields. So if you take a closer look to those names, you can see they are following the title case where we have capitalized words and separated by a white space. So you can see over here, we have the product space ID where the original name was product underscore ID. So here Tableau did rename our fields. So here it's really cool. We have in the metadata grid, a mapping between the old values, the remote field names, and the new ones after Tableau did rename them. So we have always a data lineage between Tableau and our data sets. As I said, there is no right and wrong here, but it's very important to define those rules at the start of the projects before you start building any visualizations. And I remember one project where we started immediately with building the dashboard and visualizations without deciding first on the naming conventions. So we built around 30 dashboards in Tableau. And after a while, of course, we found out that the developers are using different naming conventions, which is really normal. If you don't define the guidelines and the rules at the start of the projects, then everyone gonna make their own style. So we end up having a lot of dashboards with different rules and the users were not happy about it at all. So then we decided in the naming conventions and of course we were too late for that. Then we spend a lot of time renaming the data set checking the report and so on. So if you don't decide at the start of the project, especially if you have like a big projects, on the naming convention, then you're gonna have really painful and costly process of renaming everything from the scratch. So make sure at the start to take enough time to talk to your users and the project team to decide on the naming conventions. And very important in the review process of any new dashboards in Tableau, that to check that the naming conventions are followed in each workbook to be consistent in the whole project. All right, guys, so that was an overview of the different naming conventions. Next, we will learn how to rename fields and tables in Tableau. And if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it if you support, like, and comment. This is really gonna help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.